Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in studio for my third podcast, Dr. Roy Buzzcorth. Roy, what's going on, brother? How are you? Hey, what's up, Jay? How you doing, man? Excited to be here today. It's good to see you, man. So Roy and I have had an amazing conversation off air, which we will not share about yet because what we are talking about is not for public record. But uh, Roy has been on the podcast now. This is his third podcast uh, with me. He is a genius when it comes to you know age management, anti aging medicine, peptides. Uh, his real specialty, though, is talking about stem cells and just you know literally you know ch- slowing the life, slowing the aging of the cells. And we're going to talk about a lot of different different things. Uh, but he is, again, the kind of the founder and the owner of uh, BuckeyePMR.com is his website. I'll put it up real quick here right now. But he is in Ohio, of course. And again, just a big age management, regenerative doc that him and I have been friends now. Dude, you know, we've been friends actually since 2016, bro. It's almost seven years. Can you believe Freak that? And all that stuff, right? That's crazy. That's crazy, <laughs> man. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, he's been very helpful for me in a lot of ways. Uh, he was He coached me actually. Uh, this summer when I went down to see the guys at uh, Dream Body, you know, before I did my stem cell and all the treatment my wife and I did. And by the way, I didn't get a chance to tell you, and I'll just say it right now. The P in the O shot is pretty amazing shit, man. <laughs> I mean, anybody, I, we, you know, anybody suffering with either erectile dysfunction, females with incontinence yep. or with O issues, yep. you know, the, the use of the birth tissue or a good quality PRP, there's no reason that yep. fixes, unless you have like really severe, severe, severe problems. 95% of people get better with those treatments. I mean, dude, honestly, like obviously I had no erectile dysfunction, but I mean, I'm 51. I mean, as you know, as you get older, you don't have the same wife in the penis or the Johnson, but uh, dude, it's been a game changer. And my wife is like, I mean, it's, I, I, I mean, I don't want to like oversell it, but I will just say that I am shocked. It, it, I mean, it's that good. I mean, I, I mean, both of us have already committed to going every year. Right. Like there's no reason not to do something like that. Every it's year. amazing. It, and it a is. lot of females too, that, that suffer with incontinence, which yeah. is very common after childbirth. Yeah. yeah. There's no reason to have that. You, you know, you can get, you know, you know, even here in the States, there's still people using birth tissue or, or real good quality PRP. Yep. It, and you get that neovascularization and it improves those tissues. You don't have to have the incontinence and all this different stuff. So no reason to suffer. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. You know, that, and that's a great part, you know, obviously you and I were talking off air about like, how crazy everything is starting to look, you know, in the economic of the economics of the world, not just the U S but everywhere around the world. But there is also on the side, there's all this amazing, like wondrous biomedical technologies and, you know, healing um, stuff that's just coming into the marketplace that are, I mean, it's all inspiring. Right. So it's like, I know you and I are both glass half full guys. I mean, we know it's going to get weird here pretty soon, but I personally believe, and I'll let you comment, but I think what comes after this next decline is a golden age. I really think it happens. Well, I think people are learning that you, you know, you can't trust big pharma, right. you know, and, and, and I'm not, there are medications that save lives. So I'm not slamming all medicine. Right. But, right. but, but a lot of it is financially driven. It's not totally. about the patient. You can't depend on your insurance company because your insurance company does not care about your health. It cares about the shareholders. And, you know, you know, I think when I first started practicing back in 2000, everybody had really good insurance, you know, right. $200 deductible, $5 copay. And if someone would come to me at that time and say, I'd, I'd offer a cash service, you know, we'll say PRP for erectile dysfunction or something. Right. The first thing they'd say is, well, I have good insurance. If my insurance doesn't cover it. I'm not doing it. Exactly. But what's happened now, Jay, is everyone's insurance is terrible. Right. So in essence, the, your insurance now is if you get you know gunshot, car right. accident, heart attack, it's going right. to cover that. Right. But people, I think, more and more realizing you can't use your your insurance for to be healthy. So exactly. that's opening up these these therapies that actually work. You know, you know, we, you know, peptides, you know, hormone optimization, you know, uh, autologous procedures. 
So more and more people are open to it. So, and and they're going to be healthier because of it, Jay. So, um, you know, there's a silver lining to every cloud. And I think the silver lining is, you know, as insurance coverage gets worse and worse, there's this awakening that, you know, really can't trust your insurance company. And you really should question what your doctor and I should do my own research and use resources like you to find out, you know, because there's, there's these amazing therapies out there yep. that really work. And just because you're in, in the, the one thing that drives me crazy about medicine, and we're a medical clinic, but medicine has this, this tendency in the U S not all doctors, by the way, I don't want to categorize anybody. If they don't understand something. So if I go to my doctor and say, Hey, I'm having inflammation instead of taking Celebrex, can I take BPC one five, seven, for example, <laughs> The doctor is going to say no. That's that most doctors are say that that there's no there's no clinically research to prove it works. Right. It's not going to work. You know, you know, right. you have high cholesterol. You need to take your statin because that's what the textbook says. Right. When it's just not the case, man. If totally. You just, they, they open your eyes. That's exactly right. The research, you know, and and that's where I think you're you, you're you know you're saving lives because. You know the the stuff you're talking about does have research behind it, but it's not big, doesn't have big pharma behind it. And, and unless people search people out like you, they're not going to find this information. And they're like sheep, well, you know, herding sheep. You know. Yeah, I mean, and thank you for that, and 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 I received that. I appreciate it. But obviously, you know, I wouldn't be anybody. I wasn't also interview, interviewing maverick doctors like yourself. You know, and and there's obviously tons of other people that I get a chance the opportunity to speak with. But you're right. I mean, it's all of us collectively you know, speaking out, teaching people, but you know, it's funny what you said, because you're like, you said BPC. And I'm like, dude, the average doctor would look at the person when you said, I want to use BPC instead of Celebrex with it, like a, huh? Yeah, it was, but, 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 but what drives me crazy is <laughs> if someone asks me about something, Jay, if you ask me something today, I don't know about it. I'll just let you know. I'm not really sure about it. I'm exactly. Research, but right. medicine or the, uh, a large ones of doctors will just sat out and say, no, it's no good. Don't use it. It's not safe. Exactly it's not right. clinical research. You know, if you don't know about something, just, I don't know. You know well, it's the same thing with testosterone. You know this going way back. I mean, the average doctor literally won't even test their labs for a man because they're saying, you're fine. It's part of aging. You know, you don't need therapeutic testosterone. Who cares what your testosterone levels are? I mean, it's insane, but you're right. They don't even understand it. The average doc, PP, you know, PPO or HMO doctor doesn't even know how to read a testosterone lab. No. And, and, it, and, and maybe a separate podcast, Jay, like, you know, we have over a thousand patients on, on hormone replacement at our, our facility. And it's scary how levels on even younger individuals oh, it's are. Insane, dude. Like, you know, so, you know, if people are listening to this, if you're younger and have these symptoms of low testosterone, just because you're in your 20s doesn't mean you don't have low testosterone. In, in these 20 year olds and 30 year olds, go to their doctor and say, "Hey, I'm you know tired, sluggish, and they'll you know do I have low T?" They might hear your podcast and they'll say, "There's well, there's no way, Jay. You're too young. You have depression. <laughs> you're gonna put depression medication." That's, that's, that's right. That's how they make money. That's how they which, make money. Which is crazy because you know once you start down that depression, and the depression's real for people. I'm not saying I'm not debating that. But it's way over drugged. It's and a usually, lot of people you know this. You, dude, you and I both know this. It's usually due to a deficiency of some form of hormone. And it always leads to brain dysfunction. You know, again, pathways in the brain become disillusioned or disoriented or dysregulated because you don't have optimal hormones. And it's from right. the contaminated food, the shitty environment, the water, the air. Everything in the USA now is, like you said, USA Inc., the corporations have contaminated and soiled everything. And so now people can't even breathe, bro. Like I, I, I was just talking about this the other day, you know, we eat grass fed wild caught, but what does that even mean? Yeah. Jack, you know, I mean, it's crazy. It, is the grass fed beef not having the shit fall out of the acid, you know, from the acid rain? I mean, come on, dude. It, it's crazy. I mean, I could date my, 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 my son is 16 healthy plays sports year round. Uh, he's like my shadow. He was complaining his time. We were working out together. He kept having all these like stupid injuries. His knee hurts, his back hurts. I'm like, yeah. dude, you're in a wheelchair by your 15 50. years old. So I'm like, hey, let's let's do your let's just do your hormones for the hell of it, just to see. His testosterone, his serum level came back at 305. Wow. 16 years old. He's 16 years old and a healthy, like healthy. Yeah. You saw him. You think? It's I mean, insane, so bro. it's insane. So I mean, uh, I mean, if I was, you know, and, and you and I speak about this off air, but I mean, if I was going to go full blown uh tin foil right now i'd tell you they're fattening us up and they're going to come down in their ships 
And they're going to say, okay, everybody move on to the gym. Nobody's going to fight back because the kids have no testosterone. I mean, brother, you already know this. We talked about this before. The U.S. military has not one push-up or pull-up now in wide swaths of administration. You don't even have to even do one push-up or pull-up to get into the U.S. government. I mean, who are those guys going to fight? Nobody. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want them. I mean, they, I mean, they, they want them to roll over. So <laughs> it's crazy. So, uh, you know, and I think today we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, a, a condition that affects, you know, you know, millions and millions of people. And that's sure. you know, basically arthritis. Yeah. Let's get you it. know, and it's out. known as degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis, you know, pretty much everyone at some point in their life, if you live long enough, is going to have the potential to have this, you know, we'll call it a disease. But when you ask people, you know, do you know what causes your arthritis? Most people don't know. Right. And, you know, it, and basically the way somebody gets osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease or just arthritis, we'll call it, is either due to overuse trauma or post-surgery. Basically what happens is the body, uh, when you have pain, pain is always caused by these proteins called cytokines, right? So we'll say you tweak your shoulder or your knee at the gym today and it hurts. So those are cytokines released. And it's like your check engine light. Hey, Jay, let's not squat again tomorrow. Right. Your knee. So it's a good thing, right? So it's, it's warning you to do it. Um, but when that happens, also, your body releases another protein called uh, that these proteins called proteases. And the yep. reason your body secretes these proteins or proteases is to clean up the damage. So, yep. hey, there's an injury. There's cytokines to tell you don't do any more, uh, you know, give it a break. And proteases to clean up the damage. The huge issue, though, Jay, is when we get older, when I say older, past 30, 35 years of age, our yep. joints become avascular. Right. And these proteases, which are really large proteins, can't get out of the joint. They're literally right. trapped in the joint capsule. And the issue is when they get trapped in the joint capsule, Jay, if there's nothing to clean up, they start to eat up at you. They start to eat away at your synovial fluid and cartilage. Exactly. So anybody who has osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease, which you never see in young people because yeah. those joints are vascular, <laughs> is because uh, these proteases make that joint more catabolic than anabolic. Right. Right. That's the cause of arthritis. Yep. Beautiful. Very well said. And a lot, you know, I would add to, you know, I found, and I found this out for myself, you know, doing when I was younger in my twenties, experimenting with ketogenic diets. Um, as you know, there are a lot of people out there too, that are not eating enough carbohydrates and training at intense levels. A lot of these guys are obviously enhanced. You know, I, I do want to mention SARMs at some point in this podcast as you and I, cause I don't want to oh, let yeah. you know without we talking. Have, about we have to, that's the public. No, 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 service. for sure. But, uh, but you know, that, that's, the synovial fluid in the joint capsules is a real thing for people that are not getting enough adequate carbohydrate consumption. And again, I don't want to get into a debate here on like what nutritional strategy is optimal. I mean, I don't care what you do, but all these people that never refuel their muscle glycogen stores, Roy, and constantly stay in a very dry, you know, again, keto or carnivore state are right. also causing, as you know, potential catastrophic tendon and ligament, you know, issues, if they're, like you said, if they're squatting or they're doing high impact or ballistic movements, as you know, all the people in CrossFit, right. which is a whole nother story altogether. Right. But like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's, it's interesting. You talk about that. Cause I love that. You know, I, I mean, I've always been talking about like the awareness of like, you know, how much synovial fluid do you have in your joint capsules? Cause that was also, as you know, too, I mean, as you age, of course it just goes away. And that, again, as you said, that's what's causing for a lot of people arthritis. But I mean, I'm telling you, you see a lot of people who catastrophically injure themselves because they're not getting any carbohydrates. And again, there's like a phobia of it. Yeah. Especially as people get older, you know, in, in this, what everyone has to realize your whole life, you're, you're fighting this bottle, this battle between anabolic and catabolic, exactly. right? The more anabolic you are, the, the healthier you're going to be, the better you're going to feel. Uh, but you're fighting nature is cat, you know, as we get older, this catabolic monster, right? Exactly. So, so, you know, and the same thing's going on in your joint. So when the proteases make that joint more catabolic than, than all the good things in there, then it breaks down with time, right? Right. And if you look at traditional medicine, you go to your doctor, you have arthritis, you know, the money's in surgery. Yeah. You know, so, you know, typical course, you go to your doctor, you have, you have, you know, pain in your knee, they're going to give you a cortisone shot. Yep. Which is the absolute worst thing. You can do. You do. And by the way, they're doing that to all the NFL players. I just talked to a guy. They still won't even let BPC and TB500 be legal. I mean, they're all doing it behind the curtains, but it's insane, bro. And yeah, they inject cortisone and cortisol into the joints and say, get back out there and play. 
there's nothing more catabolic than cortisone. There's nothing. It's like a nuclear bomb in the joint, right? Like it's insane. I mean, if you have the Super Bowl's tomorrow, Jay, and you got to play, you, you. I mean, I, I, I would, I would, I would consider doing cortisone just because it, it, it's very fast acting. But that's why their the careers downstream are short, effect bro. is so bad. The downstream. That's why their careers so are short, bro. They're literally, they're really Roman gladiators on the field. They're pieces of meat, you know. And that's how they're used. I mean, you. I mean, look at the guy, Dak Prescott. He blows his elbow out. The guy's got you know, Jerry Jones has him getting surgery at four thirty in the morning. The next day, we got to get you back out there, bro. Well, there's a whole. Well, you know, you probably know this too, Jake, because being in this space, there's a whole subculture in the in all these sports where if you're a player and you get injured, obviously, if you blow your knee out during a game, everyone knows. But if you right. are injured, you don't tell the coach. Exactly. And you 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 call your agent and you get some of these other treatments that maybe aren't. Uh, they call they medicine. call Roy Korth and Jay Campbell at that moment. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know, it, you know, because <laughs> as soon as you say you're injured, you know, there's two other guys in the same position there the next practice, and you know, whatever. I wish I could share my screen because literally that call happened yesterday, and he just texted me like, "Oh my god, thank you." But yeah, dude, that's exactly right. You know, and then these guys, as you know, are at risk themselves because you know they gotta also play the game with the drug testing and all the bullshit that WADA, you know an agent shows up in their piss screen or whatever. And they're like, you're, you're cheating. It, dude, it's insane. It's crazy. It's, it's I mean, I, so I, I had this just not to rabbit hole, but you know, this uh-huh. person yesterday, I was like, if you asked a hundred people who watch NFL, let's just say NFL and NBA, right? They're the most explosive movement sports. And you said to these guys like, Hey, would you pay more money for tickets? If you knew that these players were enhanced to the gills to be the best and baddest and biggest, faster, strongest, would anyone say no to that? No. So it's like, why are you depriving the athletes the ability to recover and to be enhanced and to be metahumans? It's just, it's nonsense, bro. Well, it's kind of, if you look at the UFC, right? Like there's no good old fighters anymore because you can't train. And those That's guys are cool. animals. They're training, you know, jujitsu, Muay Thai. Like you're training right. all day long. You can't train all day long and not without use. messing up your endocrine system and needing exactly. supplementation. And, exactly. and what's happening is these guys can't do it. So then right. you're not seeing any fighters lasting and when they get older, like we used to, when we were younger. Now that doesn't mean, and I also think Jay, like you can take too many steroids. You'd be slower anyway. So does it really, yeah, yeah. if someone's that stupid, they take a bunch of juice and be like a bodybuilder. They're, they're right. actually anyway. So yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. But, but, but you know, there's certain it. things you and I know that these guys could be using that guys like us could be helping them with that would enhance their recovery and make them faster and stronger and not slow them down. But again, these, these, you know, testing companies or the regulatory agencies of all of these governing bodies. It's a fucking scam. I mean, you're right. You know, it's funny. You just said MMA. I just saw literally Chuck Liddell two weekends ago. Oh yeah, cool. The guy, dude, the guy is like, I mean, he's like, I mean, I don't want to talk shit about him because I love the dude, but like, I mean, he's got a gigantic boiler. I mean, the dude, I mean, look, I don't know how he's alive, but like, you're right. I mean, back then, those guys weren't being looked at and scrutinized, you know, when they were fighting for, uh, you know, uh, appreciation and just like, I, you know, basically ratings. They didn't give a shit. But now all of these guys can't do anything, bro. It's yeah. nuts. Yeah, it definitely decreases their careers, right? Because because you can't train year round like that, and you have all these other injuries. So, Dude, the average NFL player, I, you probably know this, is one point seven years. That's the that's the life of an average NFL player. Think about that. That's Joe true. Burrow said. Joe Burrow said yesterday he doesn't even remember games. His CTEs are so bad. It's sad. He said that uh, hunk of meat get the next guy right. Exactly, dude. But I mean, you know what? To not rabbit hole, but at least they pay him. Remember back in the day when they didn't even pay him? Pete True, Rose. Yeah. Was a, Pete Rose was a good friend of my dad's. And, you know, they, I mean, I have all sorts of Pete Rose stories. But, I mean, dude, it, in Pete Rose's first five years, I don't think he made $100,000. That's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, basically. Well, now they're getting paid in high, in, uh, in uh, college, too. So what the hell? <laughs> NIR, right? Yeah, NIR, yeah. NIR, or whatever it is. I know it's all a sham, but at least they are getting paid now. So at least they can't say, well, you know, I gave my body up on the field. I would agree with that. And, you know, and, and really, if your income is your exchange with society, if you're That's bringing right. a bunch of joy and you have something you need, you, you deserve to make more money. Period. Yep. Yeah. The more value you create, the more money you pay. All right. Yeah. You get so they deserve to get paid 100%. 100%. Hundred percent. All right. Well, so back to um, what you were talking about with osteoarthritis. I mean, I know, I know you want to talk about a lot about uh, PRP and 
you know, stem cell. Why don't you set the record straight for my audience on what the hell happened in the last two years in the USA in regards to stem cell? Because there's so much misinformation. Yeah. So um, I think the issue that happened with stem cell, you you know, I'm a little bit biased, but, you know, the FDA is run by Big Pharma. Of course. And uh, and the FTC and the FDA are both government organizations. So um, there's no money in stem cells for Big Pharma to get into it because you can't buy them. It's natural. Just like peptides, Roy. Just like peptides. So, uh, you know. All you always have to do is follow the money. Always. So if something doesn't make sense, just okay. Well, how? Could, where's the money at? Where's the money? Well, you can't. You can't patent peptides. Can't patent stem cells. Can't patent PRP. Can't patent A two M. These are all naturally occurring things. So big pharma is never going to like it, and it's competition for the synthetic versions that are never as good. Yep. Even with bioidentical hormones, you know, they like yep. they don't like it. There's no money. There's no money in health. Yep. There's no money. Nothing. In no, zero. zero. So, you know, you know, I'm not so cynical to think they have a cure for cancer out there, but sometimes you even question, would they even want to cure cancer? And I'm not, I'm not saying that is true or not true, but it's like, there's money in people being sick, which yeah. is sad. Yep. So, yep. you know, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, the FDA came, you know, there was this exemption where they had this, what they called a 361 exemption, where if you met these criteria, then you were going to be able to use it. And the FDA basically came out and said uh, to be the, 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 where they came out, it, it was homologous use. So whatever the tissue was used for in the donor, it has to be used for in the donee. So, you know, in birth tissue, the FDA flat out came out and said that, you know, there's no birth tissue in joints. So we're never going to allow you to use them joints. Doesn't matter if it's safe. Doesn't matter if there's good research to show that it works. We're not going to allow it. Now, if someone wants to go down the drug pathway and do double blind clinical trials, which you know, you know that's cost in the in the in the the millions and millions of dollars oh, to do this, and right? It takes a lot of time too. Uh, average is fifteen years, and in, in <laughs> B. So let's say me and you, Jay, do this together, and we go to this pathway fifteen years from now, and we get it approved. Anyone else could copy it because it's natural. So no one's. It's never going to follow that criteria to be FDA approved, right? So so that's what happened. Uh, it's not illegal to use birth tissue because the practice of medicine is regulated by the person, by the States. Yep. But it is illegal to advertise it because uh, advertisements are regulated by the FTC or federal trade commission. Yep. And it's so uh, to the extent now, Jay, even with peptides, you can't have an ad for peptides on your website. Hey, I took BPC for my knee pain. I'm better because that's considered false advertising. Cause there's not double blind clinical trials to prove it, even though the patient signs off and they got good results. (laughs) Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So like, so, so, so you can't advertise for it. You can't make, and you also can't make claims. Like I can't say, Hey, um, take, you know, use an umbilical cord tissue or use right. PRP because it may be beneficial for your knee pain Yep. because they'll say, great. Where's your double blind clinical trials? Yep. So you can't make any claims. So all you can say is it may be beneficial for, it and you can't advertise for it. But when someone comes, the, the good thing, Jay, is what doctors like you, like you work with it and like ourselves, yeah, when people come in, I just in my office, I can tell them whatever works. Exactly. And as long as exactly. I'm clear, hey, this is not FDA approved. There's no guarantees. There's no guarantees with anything. And the patient signs a consent form. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. And the patient, more importantly, can do whatever they want. Yep. Yep. Hundred percent. That's the deal with stem cells here in the in the U.S. or umbilical cord tissue and umbilical cord blood. Uh, there are still providers doing this stuff. So that's um, what I want to ask you. I want to go deeper on that. And again, I want you to be Roy. Yep. How much risk are they in? Um, as long as the pay, they can't advertise because if you advertise this stuff, uh, the FTC is actually worse than the FDA. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. False advertising. They'll, shut you down. they'll, they'll uh, put you in jail. They'll put you in jail. Yeah. And there's several doctors in big trouble for that. So you can't advertise anything that's not FDA approved. Anything. Insane. Peptides. Insane. Uh, you know, anything that's not FDA approved. And, and when the patient comes in, the provider has to be very clear. Hey, listen, Jay. Uh, you have osteo, you know, you know, for example, we use your knee, you have osteoarthritis in your knee. Um, your options are cortisone, which is going to make it worse, but we can do that to buy you some time until you eventually replace your knee. Yeah. Uh, there's hyaluronic acid supplements that, yep. that are drugs. Yep. So that's why they're out there and they're FDA approved, but hyaluronic acid never lasts ever, ever. It's made out of yep. rooster cone. 
Totally. Um, it buys you some time. And anyone you know that ever had those will say, oh, yeah, it might have helped me for a week or a month, but the pain always comes back. So the medical model, when you have arthritis, if you follow the medical model and what your insurance covers, you're eventually going to replace the joint. That's the model. Yep. And people will often ask you, well, why would the insurance company want to replace my knee? It's got to be more expensive than doing like a stem cell or A2M or whatever. What people don't understand is the average person switches insurance companies every two years. <laughs> Yeah. So, so they'd rather kick the can down the road and hopefully you're with another company than invest in saving your knee or whatever joint you have arthritis in. Yep. So follow the, once again, follow the money. Always. So, you know, but, but the, the good news with, you know, with osteoarthritis in particular, you know, we know that there's another protein that's in your blood called A2M or alpha two macroglobulin. That that's basically what they call a broad based protease inhibitor. So basically a patient can come to a clinic that has osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease in any joint, we take their blood out and we we make this A2M product out of their own blood. We basically, what you're doing is you're capturing all these A2M molecules that yep. are circulating in their blood. Yep. And remember, they're in the blood, but there's, these are also very large proteins. They can't get into the joint. Right. Because you might be saying, well, why wouldn't it just get there? Well, because it can't. It's too big. Right. Then we take that and you inject it back into the joint and it literally stops arthritis at the molecular level, Jack. It's amazing. You know, and there's tons of good research on this. Like, like it's a sure thing. And I can tell you from my own clinical experience in our clinic, and we've we treated hundreds of patients at this point, literally every person gets a significant release using A2M. Every person. I've never had a patient do it. doesn't matter age or conditioning level or anything. People, people in their 90s, uh, you know, you don't see arthritis in younger people. So we're not right. going to talk about that. It's always at people. Least, yeah. At least, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But these people always get a result in it and it works because you're stopping the cause of arthritis. Yeah. So the analogy I use with patients is, you know, when you look at someone who has arthritis, picture, you know, everything in your body always regenerates, Jay. It should, sure. right? 100%. Everything you cut, you got cut it would heal, right? So when you look at someone with osteoarthritis, that joint is breaking down quicker than it than it's growing back. That's what they call catabolic. Right. And the reason it's breaking down if you have arthritis is because of proteases. So let's call those proteases, let's pretend it's a garden, you have bugs in the garden, Jay. Yeah. So the bugs are eating your garden quicker than the garden can grow. So we can, you, you know, so we can put some, something to stimulate the garden, like PRP, platelet-rich plasma, is great. You put that in there, it's like fertilizer, even stem cells, yep. fertilizer. Yep. But it doesn't kill the bugs. Right. So that will buy you time where if you put A2M in there, it literally binds and stops the proteases or kills the bugs. Beautiful. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Much so how, much, so how much does this, you know, because obviously I'm just reading between the lines right now. Like, what does this cost someone? And then my, uh, the, more importantly, because this is the question people say to me, you know, they ask me when, about my stem cell treatment, because as you know, my stem cell treatment is amazing. I felt amazing. I still feel amazing, like sexually from it, all that. Um, and I'm three months post now. Dude, that's crazy that I talked to you three months ago. It seems like it was like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And, and just uh, so you know, and the reason stem cells, you wouldn't put A2M in it for a P shot or penis because the 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 stem cells or platelet rich plasma work very similarly. Right. It ca it causes neovascularization, more blood flow. Right. You know, so that's different. A2M doesn't increase circulation or cause proliferation. It just stops proteases. But proteases right. are only an issue when they're inside of joints, not inside of, they're not it, stuck it, in your penis. It eats the bugs. What is it, Claude Schwab? Let's them eat bugs. Yeah, this and they're not bugs, by the way. They're right. proteins. I don't want people to think there's bugs in the joints. But. Yeah, no, I get it. But, uh, but, but so how long will it last and what is the cost? Okay, so it should last unless you have another inch. Remember, the proteases get into your joints, and the reason you have arthritis is because you had a traumatic event. Right. You had a surgery, you you tweaked it, you did whatever. Oh, and when you had and the pain you feel whenever you have pain, that's because of cytokines release, which are just exactly. another protein. Right. But those cytokines signal your body to release proteases. So if you do A2M in a joint and you get rid of the pain, which it should get rid of the pain. Then you have no more proteases. You never do the pro. You never do the A two M again. So you don't do it every six months, once a year. Wow. The answer is you don't redo it. That's amazing. Yeah. Now sometimes Jay. Now picture this though. 
sometimes if you're really bad, we'll say you're bone on bone or, you know, the most yeah, yeah, yeah. control that. That's what yeah. I was going with. You might need to add fertilizer after you kill the bugs. Right. So then you could add some PRP or right. some birth tissue. Right. But you'd always kill the bugs first. And then how long do you have to wait after killing the bugs, stopping the proteases? Like how long before you can then add fertilizer? Uh, at least six weeks because the A2M also would bind with growth factors. So you would never right. put like a stem cell or PRP and A2M together. And another thing I want to warn your, your people, because a lot of your got people on here are pretty progressive. Yeah. If you're getting PRP done on any joints, all PRP preps also concentrate proteases. Right. So I do not like using PRP in people's joints that are above 30, 35 years of age because of all those, there's growth factors and some cytokine modulation. So you might feel better. You're putting more bugs in the garden. So PRP is great for P shots. PRP is great for tendinopathies, anything where there's vascular supply. But if you're putting it into someone above 30, 35 years of age joint, unless they have some type of filtration system to get the, the proteases out of the PRP, it's a bad idea. So let's talk about joints then for older people. Cause I've had this, you and I have had this talk before at one of the conferences. I remember it vividly, you know, the orthopedes that are smart, that are familiar with peptides now, you know, will say, you know, not to the patient cause you know, where they, they know where they make their money, but they'll say to Pete guys like you and me, you know, in, in private that, you know, it's very difficult for me now to like want to do an MCL or an ACL or a cadaver graft or any of that stuff, you know, to a 50 plus year old lady or man, when I can give them, P, you know, uh, BPC and TB500, right, and, and give them a strong, and then maybe potentially, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, PRP, like you just said, not probably worthy, but there's probably certain situations when you're using them in combination. Well, PR, PRP, if uh, there, there's there are PRP kits out there that have right. proteases filters, that would be fine. Right. Okay. Yeah, and that, and that's what I was going to say, but but like when. So when when and and again, you're the guy to ask. But when do you not do surgeries? anymore you know how how old is a patient i mean i mean because i obviously you know how profound bpc and tb 500 can be i mean i mean are you looking now because again i i won't mention the person's name because she'll probably get mad but she's a very you know leading orthopedic surgeon and you know i've had conversations with her and she's like dude it's a very it's like a moral thing for me now right like am i going to order this you know fifty thousand dollar procedure you know where i make you know 10 to 12 grand on or whatever you know their insurance you know they pay their deductible or whatever or do i say you know what i'm not going to fucking do this i'm going to you know make you guys do, go on a 6 week to 12 week you know tb and bpc i mean i mean when when do you start when does that really become an issue so you know in my practice if someone comes in and they have a completely torn acl that's going to cause a major stability issue in my opinion you have to fix that because that, that chronic right. instability Right. It's always going to lead to more cytokine release, more protease release. And so you're kind of kicking the can down the road and, and that would need that. Now, if it's a partial tear, then you don't mess with it. You put some right. BPC, do some, do, do a PRP with a, with a filter or do some birth tissue and you'll see these things heal. You don't yeah. need to have surgery Yeah. Uh, with the meniscus. If a meniscus is torn, it's, I mean, same thing, BPC, PRP, uh, birth tissue, and less the knees locking up. If the knees locking and there's a free fragment, you got to get the fragment out. Got it. Right. Yeah. Rotator cuff, same thing. You know, when someone comes to you with, sh with shoulder pain, shoulders are so complex. Jay, I always oh, do an man. MRI because otherwise yeah. you're guessing. Yeah. Do the MRI if it's a completely ruptured rotator. You know, supraspinatus is completely full thickness yep. tear. You're going to have to have surgery on that thing. But if it's a partial tear, those things heal all the time right. with treatment. Right. You're right. crazy to do surgery. You know, and the, and the, and one, uh, the other one I don't like. We see a lot of people that come in with hip pain. They'll have labral tears. Right. If you're like, oh, you got to get your hip replaced. <laughs> and you're getting no. a labral tear fix. You're wasting your time. It's going to re-tear. Like, that totally. makes no sense whatsoever. So labral tear. Now, younger kid, a kid, yeah, go get the labral tear fix. That's fine. But you're above 30, 35, labral tear in your shoulder or hip. You're wasting your money, time. And it's not going to work out long-term anyways. You're better off doing, you know, get some BPC get a PRP injection, get a birth tissue injection. And this stuff really works. Yeah. You know, and don't get on uh, NSAIDs right. or the COX-2 pathway that are going to accelerate. Our, you know, people don't understand. When you take any of these NSAIDs that work on this COX-2 pathway, you're accelerating arthritis. Absolutely. So the very thing you're trying to fix, you're making worse. It makes no yeah, sense. Like you said, you're increasing cytokine. It's insane, dude. It literally yeah. is insane. But the but medical again, it's, model, it's, it's, you know, medicine, bro. It's, it's, it's the allopathic medicine way. 
It, it's, yeah. it's the game. Alpac, dude, now, if I have a heart attack today, I'm going to go alopatic medicine. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, there's certain things that it's really good for. So I'm not right. slamming medicine. Definitely not. Right. right. But like, if you have with with sports injuries and oh. anti aging, if you if you go with what your insurance covers or what your traditional cover tells you, you're done. You, you just literally made it worse. <laughs> You're yeah. done. I mean, you, in, in, the, in the money, and if the money's in the surgery center, just so you know, Jay, it's not the <laughs> surgery. <laughs> oh, God. But the surgery centers is they get paid, the, the facility fees are twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 and they own the facility. So, dude, it, honestly, you know this, you know this better than I do, but like guys like us, like, I, I mean, again, we've had these conversations. Like, we wouldn't even go to a doctor unless we were gut shot, bleeding out. I mean, I mean, when you start looking at like the leading causes of death, you start looking at, as you know, the, the microbes, you know, the, the surgical instrument steel pathogens that are now like all over that. I mean, people don't even realize you do an invasive procedure over the age of 60 in any hospital in the United States. It literally is in the fine print that you have a 50% chance of post-surgical infection and death. It's crazy. And death. These people don't even know it's a coin flip if you have an invasive surgery over the age of 60. It's, it's sad, Jay. I mean, and, but nobody knows that, Roy, because they lie and they make them sign the forms and nobody reads the wheelies. It's the same shit when your kids or you or me or anything when we upgrade to a phone. Well, I think so, part of the problem, too, Jay, if you really think of it, is that people assume because my insurance covers it, it must right. be good. And it, and it doesn't right. cover your 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 hormone, your BPC, so that must be garbage. Because if it was better, it would be covered, which is the exact opposite. Dude, it's, I mean, when you start looking at, and I don't want to rabbit hole, but this is relevant to right now. When you start looking at the cause of death in elderly people, it's literally usually due from re routine procedurals, which as you know, that's at the podcast because most of that's a scam too. I mean, all of those things are scams. All these diagnostic routines. You have these people coming in that are getting like knee replacements on, <laughs> on statin. I'm like, <laughs> dude, you have no hormones whatsoever. You're on these statins. Dude. They want to do like double knee replacement. Like your outcome is not going to be good. I mean, imagine because you said the surgeon. I got to say this: the surgery where, where the money is. I mean, you do a, a, a what do you call it? A, 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 a fucking what is it? Um, a colonoscopy. Yep. And they find two polyps or lesions or whatever they are, and then they say to and they do this to old people, and they say, "Well, it's not cancerous. Well, what do you recommend I do? Right?" And you're like looking at them, and they're surgeons. And they're yeah, like, well, know, you know, it could become cancerous. So we recommend you cut it out. And then Roy, that's, those are the people that die. Yeah. They perforate the colon in the surgical procedure, even with the laser or whatever. They send the people home and three days later they have sepsis and they're dead within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It's, it's I mean, that's what happened to it. Monica's mom. Okay. We went through this with the state of California. It was the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean, we found out it was, they botched the surgery and then they lie and then, you know, she came in and dude, they had her on, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the machine that keeps her alive for 10, for 10 oh, days yeah. past her brain death. And then, you know, the, you know what the, the, you know what the cause of death was for her when she was finally, after it was all done and they put her in hospice, it should she die of cancer? Swear to God in my life. This happens so often and people don't realize. And in California, you can't sue for medical malpractice now anymore because they they hammer you they lean every person who's a blood relative and they basically tell you that you know a, an older person who's not working can get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars max payout after they investigate which takes as you know three to five years yeah, forever and then they lean you as a person you can't go buy a car <laughs> but, but yeah i do want to say I, I think you would agree with me the doctors are I don't want people to leave this podcast and say, man, we think doctors are evil. Doctors are not evil. Doctors mm. think they're doing the right thing. It's, it's a system. It's the schools and it's a system. This is what they're, they're taught. It's a system they're 100%. in. And, they're, and the doctors and just, I mean, people have to really, people probably don't even realize this. There's very, very, very few independent doctors. All doctors work for hospitals now. Exactly. For hospital groups. The day of where Jay's a doctor and he has his own doctor, that, that's over because you can't nope. survive in that model. No. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. 
And you're so so they're employees, and employees do what they're told to do. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So so it's, it's the system. True. It's not the doctors. I don't want to, people to leave it's here. Totally and think true, bro. That's what we just wrote on my sales page. Literally, the majority of doctors who are managed care, you know, PPO, HMO guys are literally order takers. They have no option. They the average doctor visit in the U.S. is seven minutes. Did you know that, Jay? I know. Think of seven that. Seven minutes. That's crazy. Seven right? minutes. How are you going to You don't even have time minutes? to open up and say, ah. That, and, 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 it's a problem. It's not the doctor. It's the system. It's 100% the system. And, 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 and as you know, too, because you said at the very beginning of the show, it's big pharma. You know, the doctor doesn't have time to evaluate the patient. They're literally looking at a fucking screen. They have to get through, cut through like a knife. And literally the, the, the pharmaceutical rep that came there that day or the day before, that's the meds they're going to push because it's like top of mind. It's insane, dude. It, 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 you're right. It, and I always say that. I'm glad you said that. I mean, you know, definitely not disparage. There's amazing docs. Uh, you know, they all start with the Hippocratic Oath. They really do want to heal people. They're all in the business to help. They're not yeah. in the business to harm. But the system is so endemically and systemically evil now. It's all about corporations. It's all about profits. I mean, bro, you said it. We, and that's a podcast. I mean, we don't even talk about this, but, you know, the Obama plan was the greatest scam in the history. I mean, it changed medical care. It changed the medical system forever permanently because it took, like you said, the $5 uh, copay and the $250 deductible to $10,000 minimum deductible. Right. And you eliminated every single person in the United States of healthcare because now only expense, you know, like you said, only life or death, you know, uh, you know, life flight type things are, are used because most people never, ever even pay. I mean, it's always out of pocket. It's a scam. Well, a person, Jay, I mean, I see it all the time. People will come in, they'll, they'll have an obviously a herniated disc, torn in rotator cuff. So, but, but to confirm, you have to have an MRI, right? Because I don't, you, you have to make sure we get treated. So you order the MRI. Now the insurance company say, well, that's fine. But you have to do six weeks of rehab first. Dude. If someone's got a blown disc, it's gonna, the rehab is going to make it worse. Can but it's a, it, they make the person jump through the hoop. So they don't even want to do it. So they say, screw it. I won't do anything. Right. So nobody, and, and, that, and that, again, and that's why I told you what I told you. Like I would literally rather be bleeding out mm -hmm. than, than go into a hospital and then, you know, add in what's happened in the last two years with COVID and all the bullshit. I mean, my God, dude, nobody goes. But the silver light, Jay, there's always a silver lining. The silver lining is I think that people really sit back and look at what would happen with the whole COVID. Thing. Now they know what's happening. Like, do you, do you believe what you hear? Exactly. Do you believe right. what you what you watch on TV? It's all a great, great awakening, bro. It's a great awakening. People are waking up. You know, people. So the high deductibles and copays is 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 a good thing because now people, you pay you pay for what works. Right. 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 That you, there has to be exchange with with the old insurance model five dollar copay. You could have a bullshit treatment and it didn't matter because you didn't pay anything. If it didn't work, exactly. oh, it was five bucks. That's right. If someone's gonna pay, you know, for a two m, we'll say three thousand dollars. It better work. Right. Right. Well, look, well, well, look I, I say this all the time and I, and I don't want to I, I want to keep that, you know, out of pocket because that's for a very specific need. But like if you do not in your mind right now think that you you and, and this is not whether you're doing it, it's a willingness to spend three to ten thousand dollars a year on your personal health care. You're fucked up. Your priorities are out of order. You don't understand what you're doing. I mean, and, and, you're good, and, and this is not even counting supplements and, you know uh meds I, I mean like you should be paying this for like massage and you know chiropractic adjustment and you know seeing people like you you know once a year anti-aging stuff i mean if you're not thinking like that then you are still hooked into that old model and say okay my copay is 40 dollars, and that's all i can afford and, you, and then you don't have health you're you're going to die on 20 pills color-coded you know at 65 because you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to run out of money first, you know, cause you know how it works, right? At the end, it's like, well, we could put you on this experimental drug, but your insurance will only pay for it for four months. And then they, they know that the side effects from that experimental drug will kill them by then anyway. So they don't give a fuck. And people have to realize too, Jay, like it's not, who gives a damn if you live to be 70, if your quality of life for the last 20 years is crap, you have arthritis and you're. And that's the way you all are, dude. They're all giant diseased, inflamed humans. Yeah, I can't tell you if people come to my office and you know I'll go to schedule them for the next visit and they'll like you know and I'll see their their day timer. They're at the doctor every day for something. Dude, it's insane. That's my dude. That's my mom. That's my wife's dad. You well, know, that's, not living, that's, not, that's not living. Like they live the their lives basically to see the doctor. You know, every time Monica sees him, it's like 
well, my doctor told me, you know, the, the other day they got into it because she's like, dad, who gives a shit? This is this guy healthy? I mean, you know, this guy's not healthy himself. He's an older guy he's falling apart. And, and, you know, again, we're not disparaging doctors, but you're right. That's the game. And, and they really do suck in the 60 and 70 year old people because like you said, they're dependent on it. Right. Right. It's so that's where I think, you know, you know, hopefully, you know, like your podcast and other people that are doing very similar things, you know, the, the, hopefully there's this, this awakening yeah. where people are realizing that, you know, there's more out there than what big pharma, you know, do you really trust big pharma? If you yeah. don't trust big pharma, where else can I get information? Where else is there good, you know, good stuff out there? Because there is this alternative that's very affordable for everyone that that works, and and, and it's available to everybody. The, because there's more and more providers I think that are getting into the space, which is a good thing. Yeah, it's awesome. Look, I'm not letting you go. We're gonna talk about SARMs, so it's funny because, uh, as you know, you were the doc that I said that I did the video on that you know that that of course YouTube suppressed, but. Uh, Oh, I put that video up like two months ago. And now I have like a really big influencer whose name will not name, but he would be okay with me naming him, but I won't for this video. But I, I told him I was talking to you today. And again, you know, he's a younger guy and he's, he's a, um, I don't want to give him away, but he is, a, he has served this country at a very high level. Okay? okay. And he's been using this arms and he just sent me his lab. And I, you know, we're, we're obviously fixing him, but dude, his HDL cholesterol. Crazy is 22 and i won't say the other thing but the other his homocysteine is bad and he's been on him you know he's a very strong muscular guy you know he's like in his mid-30s mm -hmm. and he's in great shape and he, again he's a very influential great guy and i told him i'm like bro you've got to get off those you know i, I mean it was like what you're using sarms but i i want you to talk about this because you know this dude there are so many young men right now in their 30s and 20s across the world using SARMs high school kids we're seeing high, school, high school kids because i mean dude it's insane how crazy the internet has warped people's sense i mean you know this and i know this i didn't even put sarms in my books in 2015 and 2018 because you and i knew 10 years ago they were worthless right and these now people, they're being sold everywhere. There's a, the, the high school kids are using these things, Jay. Because I'm I mean, blown away by that. Um, but 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 you got to understand when you walk in, if you go to any nutrition store, not any, but mo most nutrition stores, Stop. right in the very front of the sarms, because that's the biggest margin, because they're expensive, they make a ton of money, right? Because it fall, always falls. They're the way money. more than therapeutic testosterone, bro. Yeah, and <laughs> and you know that, and, and they're and they're sold to these kids, and and. Some of the craziest blood works I've seen, Jay, and we treat young people. Like I said, we have over a thousand patients. The worst blood works I've seen, I lied to you not, are if people, teenagers and in their 20s that take SARMs. Worse yeah. than the 70 and 80 year old people. Like, like, it's like one foot liver in the grave, failure, cholesterol through the roof. Like, you, when you get the blood work back, you don't even believe it. You're like, wait a minute, is it, who is this? Which one's this? Dude, I've never even seen HDL cholesterol in a 30 plus year old guy below 30. I've never even seen that. I mean, it, I mean, it was so bad. And then like, you know, and again, if you saw this guy, it, again, the opposite of what the labs are saying, but you, as you say, you know, that if they've been using SARMs for a while, they're trashed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and, I, and we don't even know what's going to happen to people 10, 15 years from now, but I'm just yeah, like no, right I now, it's, it's such a new thing, right? But right now, I think that, that what's scary is because it's legal and you can go buy it at the store. I think a lot of parents think it's okay, and maybe and maybe they think at least Johnny's not taking steroids; he's just doing this thing, <laughs> right? <laughs> if they only knew the how bad these people were. The I'm just trying to think as a parent what I'd be thinking. Maybe I think, oh, you know, it's not. Well, why steroids. haven't they removed them though? That's the question. You because you know that back in the day, you know, with the Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa bullshit, you know, there was androsterone or whatever, which was like the you know the pro hormones, and they removed all those. Why have they not removed SARMs? I mean, it doesn't even make sense. I don't know if they're so busy with the whole vaccine. I mean, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't I know the motivation, and maybe because Big Pharma really doesn't give a damn about it at this point. I mean, there's a, I there's other fish to right. fry. You, and I wanted to ask you too your comment on that regarding um, peptides, because obviously, 
everybody now in the clinical space is buying from the research chemical companies. You know, I promote Limitless. You know, I mean, I I know where they're made. I know where they get their materials. I mean, I won't say the company, but you know who it is too. I mean, the, the reality is, is that like all the physicians and clinicians are buying the research chemical company peptides now, because like you said, peptides definitely do work. There's tons of research. The FDA suppresses them. The FDA took, adapt, took down a compounding pharmacy, which we won't name. Uh, by the way, they just took down another compounding pharmacy, which I can't name. I think, did you know that? Um, Have you heard of this? I haven't heard of the new one, but I know that, like, like it seems what they've been doing is though they're showing up when they do their their audits, and though if there's any pep, really, I think it comes down to if the peptide doesn't have a UPC code on it, then you have to get rid of it. Period. So it's getting harder to even get. Really, it's only going to be available as the, as the these research compounds. That's it's exactly right. Gone. Well, I'll, I'll tell you off air because I don't want to say it you know, yeah. in, in fairness to the owner, but this is a huge compounder. And I just found out about this two weeks ago. So you might not even know. Well, they don't. I mean, the FDA hates all compounders because <laughs> it's a big I mean, well, so do you think, Roy, it eventually gets to a place where we don't even have compounding pharmacies and you got to go straight? Yeah, I know there's another push. I, I had heard recently they're trying to get rid of testosterone from compounders. Of course. And, you know, it'll be of just course. like with HCG. HCG, you know, which we've been using, you yep. know, it was out uh, there forever. They got rid of it from compounders. You can still buy it from a manufacturer, but instead of being 20 bucks, now it's $300. <laughs> the same thing. So if they get rid of testosterone from compounders, trust me, your people on bioidentical hormones are going to be paying 10 X for their, or, hormones. or I would just say that the gray market will change it, because you know how it is when you try to prohibit, it always makes its way to the market and there will always be smarter ingenu you know, ingenious and, and, you know, people full of ingenuity that will create a different market or a different supply chain. And, and that's what will happen. And that's exactly what is happening with research chemical companies right now. Yeah. I mean, that yeah, I, I worry they're going to crack down on those guys or who, I don't even know what they can do with that. I guess right now they're, 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 they're slowly eradicating all the compounders from making the peptides. Exactly. I exactly. think a couple of peptides, I think some more will last. Um, well, Tessa, Tessa, you know, is obviously because it's a uh, uh, FDA approved uh, lipo district, but nobody can afford it. It's like 4,200 a month. It's a joke. Yeah. I, I think the only ones that compounders will, that'll survive if, if compounding survives, which is right. another conversation yeah, yeah. would be, I think some I think uh PT one forty one, I think has a, as a, as a, yeah, as, for, as for a tide, for laminatide. Yeah. But really like BPC will be gone. CJC gone. TB gone, like they're all going to be gone from, from regular compounders. So you're either going to have to go research or leave the country to get it, which is crazy. It's literally insane. Well, I mean, I personally just know, I mean, again, thinking, but almost know that, you know, there will be research and, and you know, we didn't talk about it. We'll do another podcast because, you know, we're right at 50 minutes and I don't want the average listener, you know, they drop off around this time, but um, bioregulators, bro, you know, that's big too. Obviously the Russians, have blocked our access. But, you know, again, as more and more awakening occurs and allopathic collapses and people like you, you know, again, functional healthcare providers and, you know, people out there in the optimization, anti-aging, age management space or whatever, who are the last people, the last bastion left, the people that are not accepting insurance. Um, I think it'll change. I, I really do. But I mean, I really do think you got to see, you know, allopathic just go into tatters. And, but the truth is, is there's going to be so much autoimmune disruption. And so much disease. And Jay, so we're, much Jay we're already seeing it. It's already happening. You, yeah, Jay. I mean, I don't, we can't talk about it on here. Because <laughs> it, but the, and it's always it's horrific. With the, it's, all, it's with the second one. It's horrific. It's yeah. with the, with the extra yep. crazy, crazy, crazy things. And I'm seeing it. And we're not, you know, we're, you know, we, we, we're not a hospital, so we're not only exactly. seeing a certain amount of population, but it's yeah. crazy. I mean, imagine the die off, bro. I mean, look, we both know, you know, I'm not going to get censored for saying this. I mean, it was a population weapon. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the elites that whoever they are, you know, that run this world are like, we got too many people, you know, and as you know, we got too many older people who aren't paying taxes. They're not part of the grinder. They're not yeah. contributing to the matrix and we got to get rid of them. And, I, and it's always a, an attack. You know, again, you know, people might get mad, but it's always an attack on the elderly. It's like, you know what, they're living longer, you know, they don't produce. What are we going to do with them? I mean, bro, like all you have to do is look at the role, the tax rolls for people that are not making money who are living now into their 70s and 80s. They don't even have money. They live on fixed income and social security. What do you do with them when social security collapses, which it's close to doing now? 
Which, if you look at it, if the if you break the economy down, people can't afford healthy things. Exactly so you get right. rid of more people. That's exactly right. I mean, look, they're talking about pods. They're talking about giant pod cities in the Dakotas and Wyoming, you know, where you still have a lot of land that's undeveloped in the United States and moving all of these senior citizens who have no income and are literally surviving on, you know, quote unquote disability and social security benefits to there. I'm telling you, I've seen this stuff. I've seen like analysts talking about this. I mean, again, it's horrific, but I mean, what do you do with people who can't, you know, pay a bill and once social security collapses, which they're now saying it's going to be gone in three years or less. I mean, what, really? what, what do you do with them? Really, what you have to do if you're, if you, you know, is take care of your health so you can always be productive. Always, man. Always. Do your own research. Um, as long as you're, if if you have your health, you can always work. If you have, you have to have your right. cognitive health and your physical health. If you have those, there's no reason you can't work until your 80s or it's even longer. Who knows? I mean, like, but but if you follow the medical model, you're you're not going to be functioning when even in your 60s probably you're going to be at the doctor every day. You won't be productive, and you'll. I mean, yeah. There's two paths. People have to decide: Are you okay with just getting old and breaking down and being that, or do you want to fight the fight? And if you want to fight the fight, you know, bioidentical hormones. You know, you know, if you have arthritis, the, these procedures we're talking, you know, peptides. All if you have all these options out there. You don't have to age out. You don't have to be debilitated when you're in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. You can be at the gym doing whatever you want to do. So totally you got to, but you can't. You can't depend on your doctor, or the insurance company. Yeah. There's no way. No, it's over. I mean, that's exactly, we'll end the show with exactly that. I mean, like you, you have, you said it best, you know, I like this. I stole this from, I think, I think it was Jim Meehan, but he says, you have to become the proactive scientist of your own health. You cannot afford to look at the medical system, your family doctor. I mean, really anybody. I mean, like you said, you literally have to do your own research. Take and doctors aren't bad. Mm-hmm. We're not slamming doctors, but you know, for just, sure, for yeah. sure. But I mean, like you said, it's part that's of the emergency system. care. That's if you're, if it's emergency. Well, look, Artist you're, you're going to have a doctor. You're going to work with, you know, a Dr. Roy, you know, a Dr. Keith. I mean, all these docs I work with, amazing docs, you know, who are going to provide you hormones and they're going to provide you advice and they're going to, you know, measure your, your panels and, you know, tell you if you have warning signs or any of this or, you know, clean up your act or any of that. But you're not going to use your card anymore, you nope. know. I mean, like I said, unless you're gut shot, unless you're in a life or death situation, you've been thrown through a windshield in a car accident, you're right. I mean, I mean, that's, that's it, bro. I mean, there, there's literally no purpose. And as you know, for me, where I'm going, like, I'm not going to have any of that, right? Like I'm going to be living at the beach. So man, I appreciate you brother coming on. So for people that want to connect with you, work with you, obviously it's just buck, go, ahead and go to your site, buckipmr.com. Yep. That's perfect. Yep. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for coming on. So guys, of course, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Go visit Dr. Roy. He works with people from all across the world, all across the country, of course, in Ohio, where his office is located. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We'll see all of you guys very soon.